Right. Uh, last week, if you remember, we discussed a little bit on the, like, uh, we consider that the individuals as the, the building block of ecology. So the ecology is very much uh, built on the individuals. And where the, in the environment, the conditions change all the time, where the, then the individuals has to respond themselves, right? not as a group, but individually they have to respond. Right? So how do they respond? Right? There can be a physiological responses, behavioral responses, or even a, a sometimes morphological responses, right? And the same time we discuss something called the, uh, the tolerance, right? There is a, a tolerance that uh, uh, for any kind of environmental condition, the individuals have some tolerance. Within that tolerance, you mean only they can uh, have their optimum performance, but outside that tolerance limit, they won't be able to tolerate. So this concept of tolerance range, it's very important again. That's something we discuss. So, so which means that animals have a lot of adaptations for the environment. But one thing that we need to understand here that all these adaptations, right, evolutionary, these adaptations are sort of a compromises. Right? So the no one, not even animals or anyone, no one will get any like, benefits without any compromises. So you have to pay some way. So I think you understand the compromises. In this case, uh, the adaptations, which means that costs a lot of energy for the animal. Right. For any individual, they have to waste a lot of energy for this adaptation. Right. So, and we also discussed last week that uh, the ultimate goal of individuals is their survival and reproduction apart from the growth. So the animals have to balance in particularly, uh, and especially they have to um, spend a lot of energy on the survival and reproduction. And so any animals uh, uh, fitness actually, if they are really fitness means that if they are fit, fit enough for the environment, which means they have a lot of energy for the survival and reproduction. So in the animal world, there are two groups actually uh, based on the way animal respond to the environmental changes. We can divide the animals into two groups. Uh, the one group we call the confirmers, the other group we call the regulators. The confirmers are the, the organisms, they have to rely on the environment or the, they change their internal condition based on the external environment. Whereas in the regulators, uh, even the external environment change, they are able to regulate internal environment. Right? So these are the two groups, confirmers versus regulators. Now the question we will have is, why do they regulate? Or why some animal, they, do, they don't regulate and why do some regulate? Right? To answer that, that question, there is something called energy allocation principle. Right? There's a principle which called the uh, principle of allocation where the, the energy, right? the, there are limited amount of energy allocated for individuals, different performances. Right? So for feeding, for breeding, and uh, for reproduction and survival, there are some allocated energy. So this energy cannot be used for something else. I mean, in extreme case, they might be able to use, but uh, usually they won't be able to use this energy, usually for something else. Right? So the, this is the main thing that this energy, availability of energy for a particular 
uh, function is one of the reason why which determine whether animals will be regulators or conformer right so let um, let us dig a little bit more into this so the confirmers versus regulators right? who are the regulators who are the confirmers um, uh, there are some groups like in this case uh, we have some uh, group of animals in terms of temperature right? some animals they regulate the temperature like here in the mammals they can regulate the temperature but uh, this is a reptile they cannot regulate the temperature so on the other hand the like the iron balance or what we call the osmoregulation the fish they regulate the 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 iron balance whereas the other invertebrates they don't right so they become confirmers for iron balance this uh, fish become a regulator but for the temperature the mammals are regulators whereas the the reptiles are come from right so this look like a bit simple but uh, it's not really simple right right if you call one group of individual like if we will take fish as example if you think that fish are in this case the fish is a osmo regulator which means it's a a regulator but for the same fish they are not regulator for the temperature right? so that these terms confirm or regulator is not really for a the, for a particular individual or a particular group but maybe even for a particular environmental condition right? there may be regulators for temperature but they won't uh, regulate the ionic balance likewise this little bit complicated thing um, you just need to know that as ecologists there is a concept called uh, the the confirmers and regulators the, some do regulation the others don't do um, would we we'll take some few examples and uh, like uh, why do they control these things uh, so then you will understand a bit more right so the regulators as i mentioned before they all de determined by the availability of energy the regulators they have to spend a lot of energy for this regulation right? and using that energy they control the internal environment whatever the external environment right i though i said that it's whatever but it's not like they can tolerate everything but uh, to up to some extent they can tolerate right the second group we call the confirmers and they don't spend a lot of uh, energy for the for maintaining the internal condition right and <clears throat> there can be even some specialists right who, who can um, manage their energy and uh, they can conserve some energy for like the, the main function like reproduction and survival so they, they can be um, um, uh, some specialist but in general we have the regulators and confirmers there can be some exceptions only some individuals are come to the some of the examples on these right so in this uh, a diagram as you can see here uh, this x axis is the external condition and the the performance or the internal condition the the y axis and the the strict confirmers is like this right and the sorry regulator strict regulator is like this so the confirmer they change their internal condition with the changing external condition like if the temperature drops or the temperature increases their internal body temperature also increases so if the iron concentration of the outside environment change or the increase they change their internal iron concentration like this so that's the the concept so in the the next slide you will see some examples 
for uh, a confirmer and a regulator right this is in a relation to the temperature so if you take the temperature as the external factor so this is the 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 external temperature and this is the the body temperature of the organism so if it in, if it is the case of fish so they change their internal temperature with the external temperature but uh, mammals they don't uh, the on the other hand uh, there's another example here this is for the salt concentration like mainly for the aquatic animals uh, in the the terrestrial environment actually this is not a problem uh, salt concentration usually but in the aquatic environment animals will have a problem uh, i'll come to this one later on so the in this case this invertebrate they are confirmer for that uh, salt concentration but uh, within a range they can tolerate right uh, so they can adapt within a range all right um, so uh, one thing that this concept of confirmer or regulate actually we call this as sort of an extreme right is a uh, the confirmer or the regulator is a sort of extreme Right. not really all the animals or that 100% uh, confirmer or not 100% regulate as i mentioned the fish they can be a confirmer for the temperature but they are regulator for the iron concentration like guys it's not 100% confirmer or 100% um, regulator but um, for certain conditions they can tolerate somehow so um so that's the concept All right um, there are a lot of things uh, with these confirmers versus the regulators but what you just need to know is that uh, i have shown i drawn this simple graph just to show why, why it is a, the difference between a regulator and confirmer right. so what difference here is that the regulators Right. they have they can perform best in a narrow range right in a narrow environmental change they can perform their best right. whereas in the the confirmers they have wider tolerance right so they they their tolerance range right so you remember the term the tolerance range is little wider in the confirmers than regulated right so but the, there is a disadvantage where the regulators if they have the optimum condition their performance is higher but the the confirmers they can tolerate wider but their performance is little lower and right? so so this is the the advantages advantage or the disadvantage that uh, the animal will have becoming a regulator or a confirmer right so on the other hand in a confirmer right their performance totally rely on the external environment right if the the external temperature is low right their body temperature is also low they have to keep the body temperature very low right if the external temperature is very high so they have to increase their body temperature as well to match with the external environment and that will right so in that means although we think that the the confirmance tolerance range is wider but there is another disadvantage as if the environment change very quickly right if the change environment change very quickly so they won't be able to tolerate in that environment right whereas in the regulators since they can regulate the internal temperature so they can live in a changing environment right man danna meko kolu therna adi kela meka hari wadaga gakka hitanne dan me me metana me tolerance range ka wedi hinda api hitana me confirmers lata ona tanaka metha wedi tan wala inna puluwan kela wedi range ehema ne me me kolu unta e e condition 
රේන්ජ් එකක් ඇතුලේ ඒගොල්ලන්ට පුළුවන් හැබැයි ඒ රේන්ජ් එකෙන් පිටේ ඒගොල්ලන්ට කොහෙත්ම ඉන්න බෑ right in reality uh, if the environment is continuously changing it's very difficult for the confirmer whereas for the regulator it is easier than for the confirmer right so when taking the geographical distribution uh, so regulators can live in a varying environments whereas confirmers won't be right so think of that a little bit if you don't understand that uh, මොකක් හරි හිතන්නේ මේක අනිත් පැත්ත එහෙනම් මේ රෙගියුලේටර්ස් ලට මොකද මේ මේ නැරෝ රේන්ජ් එකක් කියලා තියෙනවා ඒගොල්ලෝ ඔප්ටිමම් පර්ෆෝමන්ස් පෙන්වන්නේ මේ නැරෝ රේන්ජ් එකේ ඉතින් හැබැයි එක්ස්ටර්නල් එන්වයිරන්මන්ට් එකේ ටිකක් වෙනසක් වුණාට they can uh, internally they can adjust but whereas the confirmers they won't be able to adjust right right <coughs> um and there is something else what you call the the microclimate habitat I don't know any one of you have heard this term called microclimate variation right so the climatic conditions usually we we define the climate for a particular large region but I think I have mentioned before as well like even even in a forest if it is a open space you will have a different uh, climate under a tree you will have a different condition right even Uh, under a tree if you have like a rock or something and under that rock we will have different countries like like in a s- small uh, spaces even you will have a different conditions temperature and lots of things will be different we call this as the microclimate in ecology right? so it's very important that animal you might have seen that they move around right they move for different reasons like even you right if it is uh, very sunny outside you tend to be in a, some sort of a shade right because the the microclimate that is the microclimate so you are looking for like you will go under a tree which means you are looking for a different microclimate habitat right same as that so what i'm trying to say, tell here that the, the animals have to use this what we call the microclimatic variations like right? they have to move around to find a better place even the environment is not suitable right it, no matter if it is a regulator or a confirmer so they tend to use this condition called the microclimate so that's why like in a habitat you have to like maintain the trees or whatever the uh, that's why the people ask not to destroy uh, like trees in a forest because they all provide lot of microclimatic habitats for many different animals so they are very important right all right um <clears throat> uh, next slide also i'm just uh, discussing about this uh, the confirmers versus uh, regulators versus confirmers how we can uh, that's all the comparison right so you can read a bit on this if you have any question you can come back to me right so <clears throat> so that's about the confirmer versus the, the regulator um they now for for what kind of a condition so what kind of environmental conditions do they be a confirmer or regulator right so there are so many environmental parameters like we discuss temperatures can be iron uh, it can be like energy or nutrients um, or the right so it can be many different conditions maybe light or so many external conditions ph maybe right so animal have to respond all these different kind of environmental parameters right so in this lecture series we are not going to like talk about everything condition but we just need to know Uh, get a just basic idea about how animal respond to this environmental changes in general right so um, i'll take ex- temperature as one example so how animal will respond like different groups just like the confirmers or the regulators how do they respond to the environmental changes 
Right? So what kind of adaptation do they have to respond to the, the temperature changes in the environment? Right? So again, uh, so animal will have different adaptation. So these adaptation can be a physiological adaptation. So they, they will change the physiology to match the environment or sometimes they will do the behavioral adaptation, right? So they have to just change the behaviors to respond to that uh, environment changes, right? The third one is the morphological, right? So even their anatomy, their, uh, the shape or the anatomy might, they have to change to respond to the environment changes. It's not very common something, but uh, I can show you some example, right? So, uh, uh, in summary, so animals have to respond either physiologically, behaviorally, or morphologically for any environmental change, right? So now um, we can look at the, the aquatic environment versus terrestrial environment. So what difference? So uh, I think I have mentioned this also before, like uh, oxygen is not a problem for the terrestrial environment environment because in the air you have enough oxygen. But in the aquatic environment, oxygen will be a limiting factor because the, for the to dissolve the oxygen, you need some lot of parameters, some conditions in the water. So, so oxygen is not mainly a problem for the terrestrial environment, but it will be a very limiting factor for the aquatic environment. Right? So that difference is there. And if you take, just take the temperature, um, the temperature going to be a, a big issue for the terrestrial animal than the aquatic animal because in the, in the water or the other way, no, the other way, the, it's going to be a serious problem for the, the aquatic animal because the, the, the temperature absorbed quickly in the water than the air, right? So, which means the aquatic animal, they will lose their temperature quickly than in the air, because the air is a little bit of more resistant for the temperature than the water, right? So that's why a lot of fish in particular, and a lot of aquatic animal, they have to be like confirmers, not the regulator. If they have to regulate, which means they, their temperature will be lose quite often, right? So most of the aquatic animals, they will be confirmers, not regulators. So I hope got that you got that idea, right? Okay, um, so if you we are still on the, the regulators versus confirmers, so if you just take one parameter, that is the temperature, so, the temperature also, there are some organisms who can uh, regulate their internal temperature with changing external temperature, where the others, they have to change their internal temperature with the external temperature, right? So in this case, if we just take the temperature as one example, so there are two group of uh, organisms that we can identify. Uh, based on their ability to maintain the temperature, what we call the thermoregulation. Uh, based on the temperature regulation, we can divide animals into two groups. One group we call the poikilotherms, right? the other called the homeotherms. Chalatapi, achalatapi, natakatine, poikilotherms, chalatapi, Right, so they have to change their temperature, whereas the homeotherms or the achalatapi, right? So these are the two groups that you would see, right? <clears throat> um, I'm not too sure whether you have heard about this poikilotherms or the the chalatapi. Sometimes some people use a term called the cold blooded animal, right? It's not exactly the same cold blooded and poikilotherms. So it's a little bit complicated terms, but uh, sometimes uh, these terms are used 
interchangeably, but uh, in the physiology, this is not really uh, correct. But um, for general purpose, you can use this. But the right term is poikilotherms, right? And this term also, uh, you can apply this to invertebrates as well. But uh, usually, this term poikilotherms refers to the the, the vertebrates actually. But uh, later we can discuss these things. So, Usually, it's for the the the, the vertebrate. Right? Uh, so reptiles, fish, and amphibians. So they all actually four kiloterms in uh, among vertebrates. Whereas the the birds and mammals, as these are the two groups where they are homeotherms. Right. And similarly, the cold-blooded we can call them warm-blooded. Right. Again, it's not the right term. Okay, but you can use uh, for some intents, but uh, uh, but ecologists or ecologically or in the uh, more scientific term is the homeotherms and poikilotherms, right? Uh, <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> and uh, that is the two terms, the two groups that we can uh, divide the animals into. That's the poikilotherms and the homeotherms, right? And there's another two terms. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have heard these two words as well, as called endotherms and the ectotherm. Right? All these terms are a bit confusing for many, right? Um, but uh, I have given a lot, lot of information here, you can read a little bit. But uh, the term endotherm means the, the, uh, uh, the bodies are worn mostly by the heat. They, they, generated from the metabolism inside, right? So the, the endotherm, they have the ability to generate heat to keep their temperature internally by through the metabolism, which means they have to use the energy uh, and they're able to maintain their internal temperature within a narrow range, right? Whereas the, in the ectotherms, so they cannot generate heat they are internally where they have to depend on the external source or the they have to depend on the external um, environment to get the the heat to get keep them warm they have to depend on the external environment. so um, then the ectotherms they have to rely on the environment right uh, now there is i have given here one example an exception is one of the mammals is called the naked mole rat. Um, I don't think you have heard about this. Most of these animals are not in Sri Lanka. I can see it looks very funny looking a uh, um, uh, small rat. Uh, but they are naked, so they don't have like, they don't, they don't have ability to uh, regulate their temperature, just, just like they are more ectotherms. Right, they have to rely on the external. This is an example, I'm sorry, exception. But usually, all the most of the mammals they can regulate. Right. Uh, <clears throat> right. So, ectotherms versus endotherm. Right. Is this same thing with the poikilotherms and homeotherms? Right. It's, again, it's very similar, but uh, in physiologically, these there are some differences. So ectotherms not really means that they are poikilotherms, right? Bit complicated, so don't worry about that. You just need to know that ectotherms who derive their uh, body temperature externally, whereas the endotherms are who derive their temperature internally to metabolism, right? So if you know that term, that's more than enough, right? Uh, Otherwise, it's going to be a bit complicated, right? All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Um, there is a small video you, you can uh, get a much better idea about these uh, terms. And then and after watching that video, we can discuss a little bit more. Right. If you can't hear, just let me know. Hey there, Meatbags. Trace here for D News to talk about why you're all so hot. But really, you're hot. 
because of thermoregulation. Science divides thermoregulation into endothermic or ectothermic, homeothermic or poikilothermic. Endo and ectothermic describe an animal that either makes its own heat Heat or gets it from its environment. Homeo and poikilothermic describe whether the temperature is constant. A cute little Siamese cat, for example, is an endotherm and a homeotherm. It makes its own heat and it maintains a constant body temperature. Most mammals and birds are endothermic homeotherms, what elementary school would call warm blooded. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, and most invertebrates are ectothermic poikilotherms. They get heat from the environment and let their body temperature fluctuate. What the youths would then call cold-blooded. But that's only part of the picture. They make their own heat, but don't always maintain it. Some fish maintain a constant temperature and create heat by swimming from colder to warmer water, but they can't generate it themselves. Leatherback turtles and laminid sharks do this too. All I'm saying is, it's a wider world than the black and white of cold versus warm blood. But that's not all. Dinosaurs used to be thought of as cold-blooded terror lizards that would obviously make amazing park attractions, so don't worry, because nothing could go wrong. But a study in science found that dinosaurs were likely mesotherms. They used a combination of internal processes and environmental factors to adjust their overall body temperature. Plus, animals that hibernate like chipmunks and some bats are heterothermic. Yeah, it gets confusing. The reason we simplify it to warm and cold-blooded is because temperature, which is mainly circulated by the blood, affects things like muscle function and brain size. Colder muscles react slower, meaning that ectothermic animals have to behave sluggishly when the environment is cooler. They don't have a choice, even if a predator is around. According to Spring and Holly's introduction to zoology, with an 18 degree Fahrenheit change in temperature, muscles contract three times faster, pulling three times the power. Knowing this, you can understand why yellowfin tuna evolved to be poikilotherms. Warmer muscles react better, allowing them to keep their bodies at a slightly higher temperature than the surrounding water. Thus, they maximize their power and can catch prey. Mammals and birds range in temperature from 97 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and that has a cost. We have to eat to live and regulate our metabolism. Pandas spend 10 to 16 hours each day just eating. And the British Medical Journal recorded hunger strikers who lasted 40 days without food, but that's child's play. Pythons can go a year between meals because they're cold-blooded. So why aren't we just slightly regulating our temperatures, like the tuna? It seems like a big waste to burn all this energy and stay hot all the time, right? All that heat keeps our muscles ready for action. Endothermic animals can almost always outrun ectothermic animals, assuming, of course, they survive the initial strike because ectothermic animals are better at that initial attack. Think like a snake or a really fast fish. Insects with cold muscles can't fly. The sphinx moth vibrates its muscles before takeoff so it gets them all warm. Plus, cold animals may miss opportunities to use their muscles to get all up on and mate. Warm-blooded animals we can mate anytime, which, you know, that's fun. Plus, all that energy and heat allows for the evolution of more complex brain structures, which allowed me to learn to talk to you right now. That being said, it's hot. And it's real hot. And sometimes it's just... Right, so I don't know how much you got from that video, but, um, but there was a lot of information, right? So too fast for maybe for some, but uh, I can upload this video where you can uh, watch it again. And then there are very important uh, information there, as you would understand. Uh, the problem with the, the ectotherms and the endotherms, like the ectotherms, they have to wait for the environmental temperature, like uh, maybe even in the morning, you might have heard that you're the crocodiles. <laughs> even they see a prey, they won't be able to catch that prey until they get uh, their body warm up. So they will be very sluggish. They won't be able to even move in a lower temperature. Right? So they have that disadvantage. Right, so they have to warm their body up to be active. Right? Not like us, we can be very active anytime. And so that's the disadvantages there. So all these adaptations, different types of adaptation, again, uh, depend on the energy available for that particular purpose, right? Uh, and also some evolutionary 
concept, right? Um, right. Uh, I think we discussed these things. Uh, the the advantages of these two agents of the four kilotherms, right? <clears throat> uh, right. You can. Uh, um, right. We talk about the cold blooded and warm blooded again. Uh, don't this take this very seriously these terms are not very scientific the cold-blooded versus warm-blooded uh, but uh, right um, as the video also discuss something about the mesotherms or some mesotherms or mesotherms uh, so in, in between the the ectotherms and endotherm right? so there are some animals in between right so the classic example is the the dinosaur. And there are a lot of theories about the, the the dinosaur, whether they, how they would have uh, regulated their temperature, whether they are endotherm or ectotherm. Right. So this is a uh, sort of a constructed uh, um, graph where showing the ectotherms versus endotherms. Right in the red one is the endotherms. This one the ectotherms, and then and this side is the metabolic rate where the the dinosaurs stand. Right, it's not the endotherms or ectotherm, but somewhere in between. Right, so that's why they call the mesotherms. Right? So they have something in between the the uh, ectotherm and endotherm. Right, so. I'm not too sure whether that may be one of the reasons they rule or they uh, went extinct, but that's not something proven. But uh, anyway, they are a little different from uh, the others, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, so there are a little bit more information on that. Even uh, it's not only the the dinosaur, but there are some other like. Uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, you can't differentiate like all the fish are uh, conformers in temperature, but it's not like that. There are some exceptions, as you can see in this diagram. Um, maybe too small for if you are looking at a mobile phone. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> this uh, red color ones, like here, they are endotherms. Like most of the mammals, but the ectotherms are the blue ones, right? Whereas the black ones, the mesotherms, right? mostly the the dinosaurs and even the some turtles, for example, leatherback turtle, they are sort of a mesotherms, and even tuna, right? Tuna ki ne kadano ani the api or kelaval baleo, a group peke kina kumal ra pekina tuna fish kela. They also sort of a mesotherms, mesotherms, right? I'll come to that one later on. Right, so so animals can be, they can be ectotherms, endotherms, even if there are some uh, mesotherms as well, right? Um, <clears throat> all right, so we discuss about the, the advantages and disadvantage of uh, the, the, the animal being conformers or the, the regulators as well as the thermoregulators or not. And uh, I have a question here. Uh, as I mentioned before, the birds and mammals are usually they are endotherms where they can regulate their temperature. But birds, if they are regulators, then why do they migrate during the winter? Right? You might have that during the winter season, this Bird migrate from a maybe from the no, northern uh, region. Even they sometimes come to even to Sri Lanka, like right into the tropics. Right. So why do they migrate? Uh, that's something you, you can think of. That one, right? If they are regulators, why do they migrate during the winter? Right. So think of that. Uh, I'll come to that one later on. Right? Right, so now we know that there are two groups as the, the ectotherms and endotherms. 
based on the, the thermal regulation, right? But, and there is another group, group called the mesotherms, right? So, and similarly, there are another group of animals, right? So they behave differently. They're not ectotherms or endotherms, then they are, behave differently, just like a mesotherm. You can use the same term like a mesotherm, but uh, uh, in this case, the, the, the physiologists, they use a term called the heterotherm, right? So the heterotherms are, they have, oh, they have different adaptation for the, the, the temperature regulation, right? Which means they, like, there are some, uh, endotherms, but they let their temperature fluctuate with the environment sometimes, right? And the similarly, there are some ectotherms, but they control their internal temperature, right? temperature these are exception right and there are two types of uh, these heterotherms right it's called the temporal heterotherms and regional right but not something complicated actually temporal with time the regional part of the body right regional heterotherms and the temporal heterotherms are the some times of the day perhaps or some seasons they can regulate their temperature the other seasons they won't right so there are some examples for these things uh, for example the the best example for temporal heterotherms are the, the camels Right, the camel, then on your tour. Right, so they live in an extreme environment, what's called the deserts. Right, so what they do is they let the uh, the the body temperature fluctuate during the daytime. Right, you know the camel; it's a mammal. Camel is a mammal. Right, uh, so they should regulate their temperature, but they let their body temperature fluctuate during daytime and then and then they absorb the outside temperature which means their internal temperature can be very high as well right but at night they release their temperature to match with the environment right so in this case we call the camel as a, a temporal heterotherms which they can fluctuate their body temperature with the, the environment but this is an adult adaptation for the extreme condition uh, you can see here in the next uh, slide uh, right uh, camel versus a man you can see uh, a man won't be able to tolerate this extreme condition in the right that's why he's covered his body and he's getting a lot of water for to hydrate but camel can live so many days without water Right, uh, and you can see even the these some data like uh, they have the temperature how it change during a day. You can right, they can let it fluctuate with the environment. Right, samara kinoni me otu angi mukadar molli me kimi otur store karna kela. It's not really true. Right, uh, they they store water in their blood cells actually. I have actually video, uh, I don't have time now, but uh, I will upload this one to your the site, right? So that is the temporal heterotherm. Temperature fluctuate. It is right? But the camel is an endotherm. Right? But in some times, they let it fluctuate with the environment, right? And similarly, so, so usually we have this kind of thing in the mammals. 
on the other hand some insects and some invertebrates right so we we know that they are ectotherms so they have to rely on the external environment but the some insects and some invertebrates they can regulate um, internal body temperature at least uh, some parts of the body right so one of the example is the a lot of insects right they have to get warm up before flight which means at least that thoracic region where the 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 the, the wings are attached that area has to be warmer than the other parts uh, for their flight right so only that part will be warmer than the rest of the water so that in that case this uh, insect um, they we call them as a regional heterotherms because the part of the body is warmer or they can increase their temperature that how they do is like a, maybe shivering right or shaking glow dark shake kala vela me thoracic region ek they warm up their body right so that is the regional heterotherm um uh, right uh, another example is this bumblebee bee sorry mai tar hama mahala tiyena me bumblebee is lagi cartoon wala hemin me bumblebee is lat karo wage ma tamai e golonge flight muscles they keep the their flight muscles warmer than the rest of the body during the flight right just before the take off they have to warm their uh, flight muscles otherwise they won't be able to fly right so also that's an example and i have even put some uh, example here me bumble bee ki me balan me thorax ekai temperature ekai abdomen ki engane age anith tanaka thiyena temperature ekai thorax ekai temperature ekai kuda kedi during the just before the flight right me me physiologically test karapuwa but uh, but if they are not flying or the other times that may be same right but only during the flight they change this right um on the the other hand there are some other similar examples not really similar but uh, uh, same like a sort of a regional heterotherm uh the, one of the classic examples is the the tuna fish right uh ungara kalin kepu balaya kela wallu ඒ වගේ ග්‍රූප් එකේ ඉන්න අය ඔක්කොම අපි කියනවා ටූන කියලා මේ ගොල්ලොන්ගේත් මෙන්න මේ කියන රීජනල් හෙටරතර්ම කියන එක තියෙනවා මේක කරන්නේ අතර මේ ගොල්ලෝ මේ ෆිසියොලොජිකල් ඇඩප්ටේෂන් එකක් ඉස් කෝල් ද කවුන්ට කරන්ට් හීට් එක්ස්චේන්ජ් එකක් කියලා රයිට් රෂියා මිලබෙලියා කියලා කියනවා මේ ඉන් ද ඉන් ද ෆිසියොලොජි යු ඩොන්ට් හැව් ටු ගෝ ටු දැට් බට් කවුන්ට් කරන්ට් හීට් එක්ස්චේන්ජ් රයිට් වොට් හැපන් හියර් because they are ectotherms right uh, and they are very fast swimmers usually the tuna and also they have to swim through maybe tens of th- hundreds of kilometers so they have to use lot of energy and they have to keep the temperature and how they do is they keep their just the internal part of the the muscles like in the central muscles they keep it warmer than the outside right so you can see here in this uh, uh diagram right the the outermost the temperature is 23 degrees whereas the the central area is 31 degrees centigrade right outside temperature may be somewhere 20 22 that's why they it's very similar to uh, here uh, maybe outside is 19 here but they keep internal temperature quite very high right how do they do this and that's the 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 concept we call the counter current exchange uh, what is counter current exchange is actually the the veins and the arteries uh, going opposite direction but very close to one another right peru nadu vandanne just like here right the, the veins the arteries and the veins when they are very close 
right? And they are going opposite direction. Now, if the, if the, the blood flow is opposite direction, the heat exchange, I mean, veins will in the latter, arteries will to make heat up how absorb kernel. And that's how they maintain their the, the internal temperature higher than the 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 outer or the the peripheral area. Peripheral patetin area sulra central the other most of the even the aquatic birds, right? You might have seen that the there is a shunt, uh, uh, otherwise they will lose the heat here. What do they do is they again have this counter current system, even the aquatic bird going very close and uh, opposite direction. Uh, from this diagram, you can understand this very clearly, right? This is without a counter current heat exchange. What would happen? Uh, and you see the temperature here, right and the the artery temperature and the vein temperature is 37 versus 16 but if they have counter current exchange this is the artery is 37 and the vein is 36 just one degrees loss but towards the other end you see the, that's a huge difference but uh, at the end the there is no net loss it's very little net uh, uh, loss in the temperature, but uh, this part have different, right? So that is to maintain the, the internal body temperature a bit higher. Uh, it's a sort of adaptation, right? All right, so that's about the, the ectotherms, endotherms, and the, the different versions of ectotherms and endotherms, uh, right? And there are other adaptations, some physiological adaptation from the animals for the temperature. So one of them is called the acclimation, right? Acclimation. Uh, the acclimation, acclimatization, uh, that is the, the ability to little bit of adapt to a new changing environment, right? For example, like someone living in the, the Colombo, if you go to an Aurelia, maybe first day you won't be able to tolerate, like maybe some can, but some maybe won't be able to tolerate uh, sudden change in the temperature. Some people won't be able to tolerate, but uh, but if you live in the same place for a long period of time, then you will be able to tolerate a little bit more than that. But that is what you call the acclimation. Where with time we can adapt a little bit to a, a, a new environment, right? And this is what called the reversible physiological change. This is something reversible, and that adaptation can be uh, changeable. Again, you can even if we, if you come back to Colombo, still you can acclimatize, acclimatize again to uh, to Colombo environment, right? So. Likewise, even then, in a lot of animals, so this kind of acclimation, a uh, little bit of adaptation to the, the changing environment. And this case is a, it's called a below thumb gun. But most of these examples are actually not from Sri Lanka. We don't have this kind of studies and we don't have even this uh, winter or summer to check this kind of thing. And see this, uh, this bird during the, the summer, the body temperatures and the, the winter body temperatures are very different, which means they can adapt, right? They can adapt a little bit to the winter and the uh, summer, right? So that is called the acclimation, right? And other than that, there are a lot of other, right? So all these are physiological adaptation, right? So. Physiological adaptation may environmental changes take, right? The physiological adaptation, then the behavioral and morphological adaptation. Uh, I'll go to very quickly. The behavioral adaptations means uh, they change their behavior to 
uh, cope with the changing environment right there are many examples for example the hibernation alatini mammals lage thiyena me concept ekak hibernation me me wata udaharana lanka wenna apita me seasonal variation nathi inda but uh, the hibernation called the sisira tarane uh, they just go to sleep a long sleep right so that's a difference like just look like they are sleeping but it's a long sleep maybe several weeks or even one or two months couple of months even so they go to sleep and with minimum physiological activities they just maintain their uh, body uh, without eating without growth or anything just survive right so that is the the hibernation and insects also have something similar that concept called the diapause very similar to the the hibernation in the mammals are calling wage thamai me cold blooded warm blooded ekama de wage thamai hai bhai we define this differently for different organisms like hibernation for mammals pretty similar process for the insect we call this as diapause uh, where they also Uh, reduce their growth and then uh, they suspend all their physiologic most of the physiological activities and uh, and they just uh, uh, take a rest right um, and similarly there are other process like uh, even the trees shed their uh, leaves that also uh, sort of a behavioral but uh, we usually we call this as the behavior for plants but uh, the dormancy stage maybe for the bacteria so some organism they have the dormancy they all sort of a behavioral responses to the the the, the environmental change right so uh, in the next slide you will see the diapers versus the hibernation where well, you can read a little bit more on this uh, concept right um <clears throat> uh, there is another very good example for this uh, cause sort of a behavioral adaptation to cope with the environment uh, again uh, this example from a desert animal right we don't have a deserts again and we don't have them as well but uh, uh, might have similar animals perhaps uh, this is a desert iguana right and i don't know whether you can understand this uh, there's a graph here this is the 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 hour of a day this is the time of the day right and this side is actually the month you can see the the uh this the dark brown means the, they are in a burrow the lightest color is the open area just like here and the the shuttling between uh, open and deep right right like here it's in the open and in the burrow or in the shuttling between in between right we see even in, even during the different hours of the day they will find in a, in the early in the morning they will be in the open and they will be in between and they in the day time at 12 o'clock they will be in a burrow even if you look at different months in from this axis you see in some months like in the july they will be most of the time they will be under burrow but in some regions they will be in the open right so this is a, a sort of adaptation to just change their behavior only just where they live and and that way they regulate their te external temperature right it's sort of a the homeothermic ectotherm right they are ectotherm but they can to some extent they can regulate right but this is not physiologically then previously we discussed about the the heterotherms but they are physiologically but this is behaviorally they they behave like a, a homeotherms but they are ectotherms actually right so that also a very good example you see uh, this is actually a, a outcome of research you see the the external temperature versus the the body surface temperature you see the external temperature change drastically but their 
the internal temperature they regulate to a great extent by just changing the behavior right so that is a very good example and that example from a ectotherm right so this ectotherm behaviorally behave like a endotherm right or the homeotherm but there's another example this is a bird so they are endotherm endotherms right uh, but you see um, at uh, sometimes right mainly at the night they go to a sort of a stage called the topid stage where they reduce their metabolic rate uh, but when they want to be very active and they they increase the their activity they increase their the temperature right when they arouse so the stage actually uh, they increase their temperature whereas in the 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 other time mainly at night they reduce their body temperature so they are uh, endotherms but they can fluctuate a little bit they are sort of a poikilothermic endotherms right can you calling it a better homeothermic ectotherm and this case they are poikilothermic endotherms right but you can go through a bit on the right? read a little bit more on that All right <clears throat> so the last adaptation right we talk about the physiological adaptation then the behavioral adaptation the, the last one is the morphological adaptations um, uh, so even the morphology can be changed to adapt to the changing environment. There are some examples. Um, this is one of the research outcome actually. Uh, so these grasshoppers, this when they reared in low temperature, right? So they tend to have very dark pigments, right? Where the dark pigment means they will absorb more heat right because if the low temperature means right then they have to keep their body warm then which means they have to absorb more heat right in that they will develop more dark pigments on the other hand if they rare in high temperatures very high temperatures then they will they will have very lighter pigments where they can reflect that light right and they can keep a little bit cooler right so that is a outcome of one of the research right but there's another example on the other side on your right side that is a uh, another classic example this is one of the foxes it's called the finac finac fox right um, they also living in a, a desert right it's a, a desert animal right uh, do you see some unusual sort of a, um, adaptation in this animal? Anyone? Right. The, the one of the thing is this big ears. Right. And that's an, an adaptation <clears throat> because they are living in a, a desert environment. Uh, so, which means they are very high temperature. So, to radiate temperature out, are you thinking of how radiate a kakoge? Heat, Elliot Adan, Tamay me loku kanti, Kangola Pidanani, it's very thin, taking good up temperature, it's a good up and that is an adaptation in there right? so it's a morphological adaptation to to changing environment right so uh, likewise there are many examples right <clears throat> so so in summary what happened uh, what animals have to respond to changing environment Right, uh, there are several steps that the animal have to go in, go through, right? Uh, I have listed out the, some of these, uh, the responses or the, 
uh, how they have respond to the changing environment. So what happened actually? Uh, this is with the time. This is the physiological process. What happened? Uh, right. The some of the animals, if they exposed to a changing environment, right. Sometimes their life history stage, maybe their eggs or the pupae or some of the stages may be impacted from this uh, environmental change. Right? Or in some case, they will do other physiological adaptation like a hibernating or diapose or some, type, some sort of a adaptation. Right? Not really adaptation, some sort of a response. Right? And then the other one is uh, they might migrate they can migrate from one place to another to as a response to the changing environment. Or otherwise they acclimate, right? or they, they can uh, change a little bit of the, to the new environment, right? Let's call the acclimate. Right? Um, and the, well, actually I forgot to tell you what the acclimate means, actually they change their tolerance limit a little bit. Right, the the change in the tolerance limit they acclimatize to an environment, right? Or if they cannot adapt to that environment, they may, they can even die, right? Or or otherwise, the animals have to adapt. Actually, even before I use the term adapt, this adapt means actually it's a non-reversible thing. Right? Adaptation evolutionary there. Acclimation can occur, reversible there, it's, it can be re reversed back, but uh, uh, the adaptation will be a permanent, uh, then make a compare to the adaptation of adaptation population, it will be an evolutionary process. Uh, so the, the that group of animal will be adapted to that new condition. But acclimation is an individual. Individuals are the acclimatized when it's something reversible, right? So, all right. Uh, uh, that's about the, I think that's enough for the day. And just give me a couple of minutes uh, just to sum up as well as the uh, little bit more information about the, the the homeostasis that we talk about. As we all know now, these cost a lot of energy. And to maintain the homeostasis, they have to spend a lot of uh, energy. And then, and one of the thing is that the, the body size, right? body size, body size, body size, body size, body size, body body size, body size, body size, body Satu Lukwin, 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 then size second Lukwin, Lukwin, I will heat loss. I do not hate with the mind. Volume versus surface area. Volume make a into the power three. Surface area can be bigger palaga than it. There are two dimensions that means multiplied by two. Right? You can say volume make a surface area. Volume of the product, the surface area 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 of the product, the smaller one. So smaller mammals will have a lot of problems maintaining their uh, internal body conditions compared to the larger mammals. Right. So, and similarly, there are other parameters. And I'll just talk about the temperature, but just like the iron and the all the other parameters, the animal have to uh, balance in that way. Right? There are many things like how to maintain uh, the ionic balance right in the fresh water and uh, in the marine water there are difference uh, fresh water in the malve and internal iron concentration 
external ion concentration adu reshoto in itakota reshoto me kon gang ge athulata eno ion concentration ek eli adu pita tarata kinda ion eliyata yanna balanu so they have lot of issues because fresh water come in in and their iron will go out of their body right so they have to deal with that but in the the marine fish they have the opposite because the the iron concentration inside their body is lower than the outside which means there's more water inside than the outside and they tend to lose their water to the outside on the other hand the iron concentration is outside is higher than the inside the iron tend to go inside right the water try to go outside in the the marine fish right so the fresh water fish and the marine fish they have to behave differently they have to respond differently to the iron concentration right so likewise there are lot of things that the animal have to respond individually right me kisima deyak groups with the karana bhai so they individually they have to deal with these kind of issues right and similarly the light and the, all the other uh, parameters that they have to respond individually right right so that's all about the 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 physiological behavioral and morphological adaptations of animal to the changing environment right so these concepts are very important for ecologists to understand uh, why different animals live in different environment what kind of condition they need why do we need to provide their condition right if you that's why we can't change the condition that's why we have to protect them in their natural habitats because of these conditions right and that's all about the individual ecology as well and and we'll, next week we will talk about the 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 populations how the the populations respond to the the environment all right um that's all about the today um make it cut complicated kela thete nathi samar kene but uh, this is the basic physiology actually uh, i just rush through uh, you will in a separate lecture you will learn more on this physiology uh, right so that's all for the day